Hi everybody, Bangkok Chronicles number, is it three? <laughs> Maybe. So, left Patea, moved to Bangkok, got a condo, month or so in, learning the area, the markets. So, we're gonna go off on a tangent slightly. 2017 now, if you want to work in Thailand, so many restrictions, visa requirements, loads of notes. Google it. Working in Thailand, you'll see it's a nightmare, a minefield. Back then, it was similar. It wasn't as strict. The term digital nomad, um, in my understanding, somebody with a computer working from a laptop, computer, anywhere in the world. Thailand, you immediately think of Chiang Mai. There's a lot of nomads there. I looked at it back when I moved to Bangkok. Is there a way of me being a digital nomad? The word drop shipping came up a lot on research. My understanding, Fred Bloggs sits in front of his laptop, companies in China are making products and selling them. He gets the catalog, puts the items for sale on eBay. People buy through him, places the order, they send straight to the customer. It doesn't touch the goods. That sort of thing and I didn't want to do that I didn't want to there was too many loopholes too many permutations where people could be let down on shipping and things I wanted to control my own buying and selling it was going to be very hard to work out a way of me legally buying and selling now I was thinking I could buy items put them on eBay and other portals sell them in the world, post them, all oh, that's fine. Doing that, you are sort of working. It's if you're bringing an income back into Thailand, you definitely are working. Um, so trying to find a way around it. Back, this is 15, 14, 15 years ago, there were quite a lot of shipping companies especially where I was in Pratanam. There were shops where a team of people, they may be a DHL shop or an agent and other, all the different brands. But then there was independence as well. Um, and I started noticing below my condo, there was four or five shops and they were all shipping companies. I started noticing a lot of um, dark-skinned African ladies and I got chatting to a lot of them very funny some of them but they always have these beautiful colored robes and things on but there was a lot of them and one lady lived a few doors up from my condo she had a little shipping unit down there there was four or five other ladies working with her and they sometimes ate in the cafe in the car park in my condos and I did get chatting being nosy, asking lots of questions. What were they doing? Well, they were shipping large quantities, I mean, and it was, it was football apparel. Let's leave it at that. Football shirts and things. A bag of a thousand at a time. They were shipping them containers, uh, big boxes, small boxes, 10 kilos, anything. They were just shipping loads every day back to, I would think they was going to Africa and being sold off on the markets and things. Could be wrong, but they was doing a lot. Um, and the guys, their partners were carrying all these apparels back to the shop and packing them up and shipping them. They had registered companies and I found out that the one lady, she'd registered a company properly. She had a work permit as import export um, consultant or something like that and I started thinking hang on a minute is it cheap enough to set up this company that I could do it legally no it wasn't it was a couple of thousand pounds to do it I didn't have that sort of money I wanted to stay above the right side of the law uh, I knew you could get work permits in them days a lot easier than you can now then I met another guy who was an Australian guy who had a shipping company 
and he did smaller boxes, five kilo, two kilo, five kilo, ten kilo, which were a little more expensive than the post office because the EMS post office service was great. Just walk in, little box, ship. But I heard, I had heard lots of stories where customs spot these EMS boxes. They immediately know it's from Asia. If there's anything in there that shouldn't be, it was going to be confiscated. I didn't want to get into that counterfeit market, by the way, but it just EMS boxes attracted attention. So I was thinking, better to use a shipping agent, proper paperwork, export, import papers, any tax you can sort it. This Australian guy um, gave me an opportunity. He, for a small fee, he would help me get a work permit as a consultant for his company and it would make me above board now um, this is what I did and I think he charged me about 300 pounds I knew it was the way to go and I went on his books got a work permit you could probably still do that in 2017 if you can find a company that will take you on as a consultant you might be able to do it but again and visas and things but I was still on the tourist visa um, and I never bothered changing my visa I just kept on the tourist visa for the two years I could have got I think it was a business B visa or, or maybe even a non oh I think it was a B visa but I did get a permit work permit off him made me feel feel a lot better a lot safer um, I enjoyed the 60 day runs up and down to the borders for the visa so that wasn't a problem I didn't bother pursuing that visa but it made me legal well I thought I was legal <laughs> looking back on it now I probably wasn't because I would have had to should have declared everything for tax purposes um, and two years later when I left the country Hmm, not sure but I did everything I could at that time to make myself legal but only with goods obviously that weren't counterfeit products and things like that I set that up um, within the first couple of months and that was a good move it made me feel more relaxed and could seriously think about export products briefly mentioned before there are so many different types. There is millions of people in this world and millions of products. The world revolves. People are buying and selling products. Every single day of most people's lives, you buy something that's come from somewhere else in the world. So it does make the world go around quite a bit. My idea was to find small products. The perfect solution would be a small product that fits in a little box that you could buy for say, 10 pounds and sell for 30 pounds and make a nice tidy profit and sell in quantity that's the perfect scenario but not easy to find <laughs> you have to try thousands of products to get any, any anywhere near that but there I was in Bangkok um, I pretty much covered Prasnam market learned the rag trade where everything was what they were selling inside and out in that market my next steps were to try and follow the path where they came from where they were coming into Thailand is the cheaper um, places and it led me to a place called Bobe market Bobe Bobe which was a night market 10 11 at night through to 4 or 5 in the morning down by the river, uh, it wasn't the docks, but people were buying in quantity, coming in on containers, bringing up the river on boats, then shipping in smaller quantities into the market and selling. People were buying a thousand items at a time. And they did find hundreds of items at a time you could buy. I spent a night, probably slept in the day, went out at night, found the market, <sighs> amazing. It's worth just a visit, hustle and bustle. But it soon became apparent that, that was a problem. I found some um, some nice shirts, uh, very similar to football shirts, but no badges and things on, just plain shirts, but they were the same shirts. 
hundred at a time. And I made, cordially made note of that. Later on in my time, I did take a punt at that system. Also from Bow Bay Market, I was always playing around in the computer market across the road in Pantit Plaza. Every computer component was coming in from mainly China. You build in your PCs. If any of you are watching now on a PC, you've got a box. Inside is probably only 10 or 11 big components that just slot in there. You could buy all those components separately. You could build computers, repairs, upgrades, memory upgrades. There was monitors. Then all the accessories, mice, keyboards, cables. There's thousands of products in that Pantit Plaza. They all sell well. People want them. But it's whether I could get them at the right price from there, ship them to wherever the people in the other end of the eBay were. The problem with shipping is it took a good 10 days and a lot of people wouldn't wait. But if you could advertise properly, and it took me years to learn the correct wording for things like eBay or any uh, portal you're selling on, the correct way of wording things correct you know, giving everyone the, the facts this is coming from Asia this is you know it's going to take this long and by being dead straight and honest I tried quite a few computer parts the memory cards um, and as time went on the first year that Pantit Plaza mobile phones were becoming more and more accessible prices were coming down it was that era um, from in the 80s when they started, they started getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Early 2000s, the, the Nokia, the one, the, they just got to the better software. They were colour screens, they were just getting on the internet. Um, the screens were getting bigger. A popular one that was an example, a Nokia 6600, but it was all numbers, lots of different models, but and the 3310s and they were just moving on from that phone to better smartphones the beginning of smartphones but again huge accessories oh phone cases phone covers usb cables it, the market was exploding right at that time pan tip the phones were popping up everywhere um but again it was all coming from china now, I, I was always interested in computers and phones. But the sellers in Pantip, they were, they were not, they were making money by selling there. So I knew they were coming in somewhere else. And again, just being a regular face in Pantip every day for a few weeks, going to the same stalls and asking similar questions and saying hi. There was a food court upstairs. Go up there, eat people are there sell it those sellers are going and eating there chatting getting to know them and I got a lead that um, again coming in from the river but they were going to an area called Sam Peng S A M P E N G Sam Peng that one lead changed my two years in in Thailand because it led me to that side of the town to Kom Tom Sampeng, Sampeng Let. Opened up my whole two years, that one area. And I will explain everything about those areas because that is so much the starting point for so many products. And it all became all came about from chatting to a girl who works in the phone shop. So that was really good lucky moment for me in those early days in Bangkok so I had a work permit as such hopefully it was a legal one you just never know but I had a work permit I had my condo I had a little bit of money I had my laptop I was set and also been there maybe four or five six weeks in Bangkok starting to get lonely had that phone number from that girl that walked into my bar, those two girls, the one that bought me the paracetamols. 
I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.